Hi everyone, I'm Lauren and today we're going to be talking about my favorite books from 2020. Uh, 2020 was kind of weird, so I didn't really have as easy of a time picking out ones that I thought were the best of the best. I just didn't read as many super top tier books for me. This might be a little bit shorter, I don't know. I don't have a top 10 or whatever. I didn't make a list. I just picked out ones and I'm like, yeah, these are the best ones that I read in 2020. And I didn't really order them. I, I don't, I don't even know for sure if any one of them is a clear top number one. So I'm just going to be sharing what was my favorite stuff from 2020 and I'm not ordering it at all. To start off with, I'm gonna talk about the manga that I really liked. Yeah, again, no particular order. First one is uh, Way of a House Husband by Konosuke Ono. This one I read three volumes in 2020, and that's all I currently have. Uh, I think there's one more out, but this is just a really funny, over-the-top, kind of slice-of-life-ish manga, and it just really good. It's really hard, I find, to hit my funny bone, I guess so to speak. So the fact that I'm laughing at almost every chapter, maybe even every other page kind of thing in these volumes, it's saying quite a lot for me, honestly. Then I also really enjoyed reading Witch Atelier by Kamome Shirahama. And I've also read three volumes of that. Very different, a little bit more serious, lighthearted y though, witch training, and really well drawn, and it's just whimsical and nice. And uh, again, I, I really enjoyed this for not humor reasons. It was just kind of a comforting y read. There's seriously serious stuff that happened in here. But it's still just like, ooh, that's so nice. I don't know. This is just kind of the... fits exactly what I want with a more light-hearted but still serious kind of manga. Then I have, you know, more dark tone, uh, Vinland Saga by Makoto Yukimura. This one, I only read the fourth volume, but man was it a really strong following. Hui, a lot of twists and turns happen in here. It's kind of like an ending of an arc, almost. I'd say it kind of feels like that the next volume will start off in very different tone. Yeah, I kind of forgotten why this was really good, and just reading this was like, oh yeah, this is why people say Finland Saga is really good. Really action-packed, and woo, really good. Then I had the final volume for Higurashi by Yukishi07, so the uh, dice-killing arc. This kind of is a side story, sort of. It happens after the main story, but it does also wrap up a few things and explains a few other things. I can't really tell you anything about it because I mean, you spoil everything, but it is really touching, I guess, and just like, ah, oh, feelies a little bit. It's, it's really good. I It's definitely a really strong end to the Higurashi series. And then the final manga I have to talk about, which is probably my favorite manga of all time currently, is A Bride Story by Kaoru Mori. And in 2020 I read six volumes to catch up to the currently now out 12th volume. Let me put these down because they're heavy. A Bride Story is just another kind of chill manga following all sorts of these different um, brides in Central Asia and they have various different problems and kind of follow their life a bit and it's just so good. I love all the characters, it's extremely well drawn and oh I, I just I just love this to bits. I just wish it would release faster but I can see why it doesn't. <laughs> so that's all the manga. So now to the bookie books. Um, unfortunately there's not really that many as I said before, but I'll show you what I have in my stack of my favorites. First in my pile, again, this, these are also not in order. Um, I read a few 
murder bot books I read, um, Rogue Protocol, Exit Strategy, and Network Effect. These are all by Martha Wells. They're just all murder bot and I really remember enjoying them. I don't remember very much of the plot points. I do kind of mix them up a little bit because uh, I read these two very early in the year and I read this more recently so I remember more of what this one but I was kind of sick so I don't remember a whole lot but I remember really enjoying them. Oh, I do remember an exit strategy of a particular scene near the end that's just like wow action-y and really good. So they're all really good. Murder Bot's really funny. I definitely am looking forward to rereading all of these at some point because now I'm caught up with the series I think one comes out in like April or something like that, so there will be another one coming out. But for now, I'll have to wait for more Murderbot. Then I have Ascendance of the Bookworm by Mia Kazuki. In 2020, I read, um, I think, four volumes. So this one is part two, volume two, and then I read part two, volume three. I think it's part, I think there's part two, volume four, and then I also read part three, volume one. Uh, I don't have the other ones in physical form because one of them only recently came out just now and the other ones are only digitally because it's so far behind, but regardless, this is a fun light novel series, probably my favorite of all time, and it is very kind of breezy but interesting stuff go goes on without being like all battles and stuff, and uh, it's just like, you know, sitting on a couch with a warm blanket and a cup of tea kind of thing. That's kind of the feeling I get with this, and I really enjoy it very much. Uh, I'm a little behind on the series because I just got behind, but it is very enjoyable. Um, it just kind of fits my little niche thing again. So not maybe a little, not enough happens for most people, maybe. Uh, but for me, it's just like, ah, I love this so much. So then I have some Brandon Sanderson that will go on my top list, whatever. So I started the Stormlight Archives in 2020. The first one, Way of Kings, is not my favorites because it was a little too bogged down by introductory stuff for me. However, I did really enjoy Words of Radiance because we got past all that introductory stuff and had a lot more interesting things happen in here. More Shalon, who's one of my favorite characters in the series. So yeah, um, big epic fantasy, a lot of stuff going on. Maybe the world building is a little bit too much for me sometimes, but I do really like the characters when we actually get to see the characters doing stuff, so that's why I didn't like the first one as much. But a lot of cool stuff happens in this. We're finally getting to the root of the problem, I think, in this one as well. And Holy Jeez is a chunky boy. So yes, I still need to get to Oathrayer, so who knows if I'll like that one better than this one or not, but this is still a pretty strong volume. However, there is a Brandon Sanderson book that I read 2020 that I actually like more than Words of Radiance, shocker to many probably, and that is Warbreaker. This is, well it was written as a standalone, apparently there's going to be another one written, but I think it's probably going to be low priority, so whatever. The main character has to learn how to survive in this high society type thing because she's getting married off to the God King. and the um, magic has these colors and stuff in it and I don't know I like this one better because it gets to the point a little faster than um, like Words of Radiance. Like Words of Radiance gets to the point faster than Way of Kings but it's still a little slow at times. This one is much more fast paced and I don't know I just really like the character things that they're doing and the twists and turns and I do like courtroom stuff, honestly, <laughs> like in ball gown-y type stuff, and there's a lot of that happens in here. They're both good, but I do like this one a little bit better. Then, in 2020, I read both The Jurassic Park and The Lost World by Michael Creation. I'm sure a lot of you know about Jurassic Park, you know, dinosaurs, ah, eating people, whatever. But it's just, 
Oh, this is... I like this a lot better than the movie, I think. The At least the Jurassic Park. I don't know anything about the Last World movie. I don't know if there is one. But both of these are just, like, really science heavy without getting too bogged down. And just, they have a lot of interesting action that happens in them. And I like them observing the dinosaurs. And it's kind of fun going like, no, you stupid idiot, don't do blah, like with the bad guys usually and stuff like that. It's just a lot of fun. And um, this is my first Michael Christian book. So I'm curious if I like some others of his. Some people say that they're kind of all about the same-ish um, quality wise. So if that's true, then I hopefully like them as well. Because I'm really excited to read more Michael Christian yeah, I haven't read too many, would you call this a thriller? These thrillers? I haven't read too many and these are just definitely up there for me. So, ooh, dinosaurs. I do love the programming and stuff in it as well in the um, first one. I don't know, I have a soft spot for that if it's done well and not just like, it's obvious that you don't know what you're talking about. My little Christian, it feels like he knows what he's talking about. Uh, I still don't know how to pronounce his name though, I keep forgetting to look that up. The uh, next book I have to talk about, I don't have physically right now because I'm lending it out currently, and that is A Natural History of Dragons by Mary Brennan. This is kind of a big surprise for me. I just kind of randomly picked it up for my book bingo. It's just, it was just way better than expected. I just instantly loved it, honestly, from the prologue. It's a fake memoir of a... Um, dragon naturalist and how she became one. And this goes over her childhood, how she became interested in dragons, and then how she got on to her first expedition and how that went. And it's just really interesting. And it's kind of written in a um, victorian -y, regency regency-esque style, and it feels like that without being too... Um, like, there's some words that we don't use, and that sometimes makes it hard to read. So it kind of feels like it's written then without too many of those kind of words. I, I don't know how to explain it. This is really, I like how it's written, which is kind of rare for me to actually go, I like how it's written. Because usually I'm just like, I read the words and it tells me what the story is. But anyway, I really like the characters, uh, especially the main character, I've forgotten her name. I'm terrible with names. She's a really independent woman and wants to get things done and just see her dragons and it's just it's just so good to read. It did almost make me tear up though, uh, closer to the end, so that's pretty rare as well. It's probably a good sign, I'd say. I'm definitely looking forward to reading some of the other books in the series, hopefully in 2021. In the last few books I have to talk about on um, I read three books in the Riria Chronicles series by Michael G. Sullivan. So I read The Rose and the Thorn, The Death of Dullgath, and The Disappearance of Winter's Daughter. I really liked all of them. I honestly don't know if there's one that's a favorite or not. They're just all really strong fantasy with the two main characters being a great team. And uh, these two go over two separate adventures of theirs. And they're kind of standalone-y, and this one is, um, you have to read the first one first, and then this one, and it's kind of explaining how they got together as a team. And they're all really well written. I love Michael J. Sullivan, and he's especially strong in all three of these, these books. It's just, there's a lot of good humor, there's some really good action, and all the character in interaction is so good in these. I think strong characters is really, really, really important for me. So the fact that I like two main characters, Royce and Hadrian, so much, it's just like, ah, it makes them top tier for me. These might be my favorite of 2020. I don't really know because these ones I read early in the year, so I don't remember them as much. But they are definitely very strong contenders for that. The only thing that's a bit sad is that it'll probably be a little while before we get another book in that series because um, Sullivan is working on a few other different series, but oh well, <laughs> that isn't that it. 
He can write whatever he wants to write, and I'll read it, really, and I think I'll probably enjoy his Milan Rice and Hadrian stuff. Anyway, those are all the books that I had to talk about. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these, your thoughts on them, and what was your favorite read of 2020? I'd like to know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in another video. Bye!